Last summer, going into my senior year at university, I was a software engineering intern for Northrop Grumman in their aerospace systems department. Since it's around the time computer science students are beginning to look for internships, I thought I'd make this video so that it could be somewhat useful to computer science students or just aspiring software engineers in general. You can find all the timestamps in the description below. For those not familiar, Northrop Grumman is a defense company and I was in their aerospace systems department, which you can probably imagine deals with aircraft. So how did I get this internship? Well, first going into my junior year at university, I was actually a software development intern within the Department of Justice, so I already definitely had a little bit of a resume booster. Mind you, there were definitely kids out there who already had two internships with Google and Apple, so although I felt confident in my past experience, I knew there was gonna be some stiff competition for that upcoming recruiting season. Even before the nightmare escape that is 2020, getting internships is hard. I still have the document from when I was applying to all those internships in 2019, and I probably applied to at least 30, which to some people may not even seem like a lot. For a vast majority of the positions, I either immediately got a coding test for which they usually didn't turn out to anything, I just got flat out rejected, or the all too familiar ghosting. So I was starting to sweat, it was winter quarter at my university, and there was only about six months up until that coming summer, and I had really no promising leads on different internships. But fortunately, my university, UCSD, was hosting a winter career fair. So I got all dressed up with my little resume holder, hopped down there, got in line, I think I even left one of my classes early so that I could attend, and I basically went around giving my resume out to anyone that would take it and that I thought could use a software engineering intern for that summer. I remember there being some big names like Yahoo and Intel, but you could probably imagine how those turned out. But I came across two companies that actually seemed interested in me. One was Western Digital, who makes hardware and storage devices, and Northrop Grumman, the defense contractor. For those who haven't gone to career fairs before, it's basically just rapid fire interviews. You give them your resume, you talk about your past experiences, your skills, your classes, your projects, and they may ask you a few questions about those experiences and maybe where you see yourself at the company. I've also noticed that sometimes they'll star your paper, which I think is a good thing, so look out for that. But when I started my conversation with one of the Northrop Grumman recruiters, I started talking about my past experience within the Department of Justice and they were immediately interested. So I walked away from that conversation feeling pretty confident in potentially getting an opportunity with them. Then I talked to the Western Digital recruiter who was incredibly nice and directed me to apply to their engineering internship for that upcoming summer. And she did star my paper, so I think that was a good sign. For me, I've noticed that face-to-face -face interactions typically have a higher response rate and you can sell yourself better than just simply applying online. I know nowadays it can be particularly difficult to get that face-to-face -face interaction, but I know some universities are doing virtual career fairs, though I don't really know how well those are run. Eventually, a recruiter from Northrop Grumman reached out to me and asked if I would be okay with an on-campus interview. And by on-campus, I mean like physically on my campus in the career center. So I got all dressed up again, headed to the career center, and it was actually sort of intimidating at first. I walked into the room and there was three interviewers and just me. They all turned out to be super friendly and they didn't ask me any like specific whiteboarding questions, but we did have technical discussions about some of my past experiences as well as some things I encountered in my classes and projects that I was working on. So I definitely had technical conversations to show that I knew at least somewhat what I was talking about, but there was no specific like code this for me questions. So again, knowing that I had security credentials, I left that interview feeling pretty confident that I would at least hear some further communication from them. But I obviously still wanted to try with Western Digital, so after some emailing and some phone calls, they invited me for their Super Day. Their Super Day is basically just a big event for potential interns to come to their office and go through a series of interviews. So they flew me up to their office in San Jose, which was actually pretty cool. We got some free merch, which was always great, and then we just hopped into some interviews. Pretty much up until that point when I knew I was going to be attending the Super Day, I had been studying cracking the coding interview, as well as going through different lead code questions because I didn't really know what to expect. This was my first encounter with a technical interview, so you can imagine it would be pretty nerve-wracking. And I had been pretty much doing lead code questions almost up until my Uber arrived at their office. My first interview was mostly behavioral, asking about my past experiences, classes, projects, things like that, and basically asking questions to the interviewer about what he did and what he encountered on the job 
job. And then pretty much my next two interviews were almost exclusively coding questions. And mind you, each interview is about an hour long and there was a total of four of them. I would definitely say that the whiteboarding coding questions were very like easy to medium level lead code questions. So I didn't think they were too hard, but looking back, I wish I brushed up a little bit more on Python. I think at the time I was very comfortable in C++, so I chose to answer in C++. But typically for interview questions, writing the answer in Python usually makes the solution a little bit more elegant, a little bit faster, as well as you have a little bit more time to explain how you got to the answer and if they have any follow-up questions. My fourth and final interview was, I believe, with one of the directors of engineering. She was incredibly nice. All of the interviewers at Western Digital were incredibly nice. And uh, again, it was more of just behavioral style questions, past projects, past internships, classes, everything like that. It was a really long day. I pretty much just got up, flew to San Jose, had the four hours of interviews, then flew back to San Diego. But that night I felt pretty confident in the interviews. I thought my two behavioral interviews went really, really well, as well as my two technical interviews. I waited some time and I got a call from the Northrop Grumman recruiter about them offering me the software engineering internship position for that upcoming summer. And I was really ecstatic to get this because I could now diversify my internship experience. I do want to say I was still interning part-time within the Department of Justice during this time, but I didn't immediately accept as I wanted to wait to hear from Western Digital and then if I had two offers, I could do a little bit more research on which company I thought would be most applicable to my interest. After constantly emailing and reaching out, I unfortunately found out that I wouldn't be receiving an engineering internship offer from Western Digital for that summer, but it all worked out in the end. And that summer, I started as a software engineering intern with Northrop Grumman in their aerospace systems department. In terms of the actual internship experience, I primarily worked on the software that supported the Fire Scout, which is basically a drone type helicopter. And you can read more about that if you're interested in sort of that aircraft stuff. And it was really great to have this sort of experience, especially going to my senior years, just as a little bit of a resume booster as I would soon be looking for full-time jobs, as well as brush up on sort of industry knowledge, industry technologies, and industry practices. As well as all the other coworkers and interns were super, super nice and just made the experience really fun overall. Something that's not often thought about as a software engineering intern is that you may be assigned tasks that don't necessarily deal with software engineering. And for some, that could be a good or a bad thing. For example, myself and a another intern were sort of designated as leads or part-time program managers for the intern project. So in addition to actually writing code, we had to basically track the productivity of the intern team as a whole and sort of present that to management. And I even specifically remember having to answer questions from management about certain times why the productivity of the intern team was below our expectations. But overall, it was a really cool and rewarding experience and it definitely played into what I do now as a technical program manager for my Microsoft, where I have responsibilities both in actually doing software development, but also in taking a more macro level perspective on project management. I just wanted to highlight some last important things. It's all about framing. I know that's broad, but just hear me out. As a computer science student or aspiring software engineer, you hear always about these big N internships, and therefore in turn, you always look for the big N internships. You know, the Googles, the Amazons, the Apples. And I think you should still do that, you know, swing at every ball, but I think you should also consider, you know, not on big N internships. So I think you should apply to Google, but also maybe take a look at your local bank. And maybe before seeing this video, you never really considered more hardware oriented companies like Western Digital or even defense contractors like Northrop Grumman. This is basically where selection bias comes in. Selection bias in this context essentially means there's some sort of bias in the sample data or misrepresentation. This can be seen a lot in surveys because the people who volunteer to take a survey may not be an accurate representation of say the average consumer. So when you're on the CS career question subreddit or on LinkedIn and you see all these posts about big N internships, just know that that will probably not be an accurate representation of the internship community as a whole. And it's really easy to get down on yourself when you see all posts like that. Some last little bits of advice, definitely take advantage of your university's resources if you are at a university, attend virtual and physical career fairs, look out for events from your career center. Usually they have like employer talks and you could go and network and ask, hey, do you guys have any internships for this upcoming season? Make 
sure you have a solid resume and up-to-date LinkedIn and take advantage of both your network via LinkedIn and your network with friends and family. And just remember that in the age of information, software engineers and software developers can be applied to almost any business. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found my tips somewhat useful. My name is Mikey or Michael, whatever you want to call me. If you are interested in tech and computer science, consider subscribing to the channel. Comment down below any suggestions you have for future videos. Tune into my next video about how I got a job at Microsoft as a technical program manager. And again, thank you so much for watching. And here's a bad British accent just for you. Bye-bye.